everybody, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. We're back. We're not even going to... I should have done a... <laughs> what should have you done? I should have done a cardboard Steve impression and just been like... <laughs> <laughs> Someone was uh, telling me to animate it in the comment section from last yeah. week. Uh, apparently there's a you know some Adobe software that would make that fairly easy. Um, I'll give it a, I'll give it a shot if I have time tomorrow, but it's like my, my you just like put the mouth. Yeah. You put like, you make like, like a mouth know? shape and it like, it will automate it based on like the audio you feed it. Um, I'll try to figure it oh, out tomorrow, cool. but if, if I can't get it working in like 10 minutes and I'm just going to be like, I got work to do guys, I'm just going to do a regular app. <laughs> 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 I don't have a ton of extra time to be, you know, Spending time on that sort of stuff. So, anyways, this first ad was sent to us by Matt Kimes. You think it's oh, Kimes yeah. or this Kim thing Kim is uh, Kimmy's? I think it's Kimes. I think it's Kimes. Um, this is the world's first and only skin guitar. I don't believe made that. Made with RD four hundred seven professional quality latex. It's not even skin. It's latex. Well, yeah, it's not going to be real skin. If that's if this was covered in real skin, then you know the cops would be showing up at this guy's door. EMG eighty one eighty five pickups, custom tuners. Also comes with Dean case. It doesn't have to be human skin, Ryan. And actually, you know, now that I think about it, later in this episode, we will I be know. doing another skin guitar. This is the all skin episode. <laughs> super sexy the, sounding the middle? while looking at this super gross like horror themed guitar. This this thing is so disgusting. Um, you see the guy, the seller's profile picture? No, I didn't see that. It's Where like a. Uh... <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tony Buck. I mean, there's a dozen pixels here, and I'm getting creepy vibes off of it. No, I'm pretty sure that's the dude from. Uh, that's like a the dude's face from. Um. The show that you're not watching. Oh, Tiger King? I think yeah. it's someone who's got a similar vibe, but I don't think that's Tiger King. You don't think it's the same guy? I don't think that's Tiger King. I mean, I mean, it's not him. I think I like it just makes me think that the guy like took his face and photoshopped it over. Oh, like, he definitely took somebody's shot. face. <laughs> yeah, and he put it on this guitar. Yeah. What's your favorite part of this guitar? What's your least favorite part? Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> There's a lot of good jokes they they left off the table with this. They could have put like a nipple or a belly button somewhere. Like they want twenty five hundred dollars for this thing. I expect details at twenty five hundred dollars, not just you know a Halloween mask stitched to yeah the a leather the, exterior. The problem with this is like. It just looks gross. It doesn't look like anything. Like, I don't know. What What do you have to be in, like, a, a Guar cover band to play this? Sure. Or you have to be in that band from like, uh, from that movie with the vampires in Mexico. Uh, Dust Till Dawn. Oh, uh, from Dust Till Dawn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it maybe. I guess you the details would be kind of screwy, but instead of the face being on the side, if mm -hmm. the face was aligned in a way where, like, one of the pickups was the mouth or where the the wrap around tailpiece is the mouth or like one of the knobs is in the eye socket or something there you go yeah now you're thinking um maybe there's could be a detail on the back you know going down the road that you wanted to go down where uh, <laughs> one of these one of these strap pegs it would be like a or some kind of orifice yeah yeah I feel like there's a lot of like, like, you know, this is a, a BC rich shaped guitar. I mean, we have to describe this thing for the podcast listeners. There's still about half our audience that isn't looking at this picture. They should be looking at the pictures. It's a B they should be it's like a BC rich warlock. Yeah. The, it, like, if you're not listening, looking at the pictures by now and you're a podcast listener, just go get in the description, click on the link for the imager and you're going to see this thing pop up and it's going to gross you out and you're not you're going to skip lunch, you're going to lose weight and you're going to thank us. That's the 60 cycle hum diet. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> um yeah, it's just gross gross gross, but it kind of nails that horror theme. Like if I saw a horror themed band and one of the guitarists was playing this, I'd be like, "Hell yeah, they went all the way. They 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 went for it." 
I mean, it, they've wrapped it around like the cheapest style BC Rich there is. Oh, now I remember where I was yeah. trying to go. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the it's the BC Rich shape. It's got all these curves and nooks and crannies, all these places that are just the perfect opportunity to throw some armpit hair in there or some pubes or something like that. You got like, oh my god, you got like four crotches on this guitar. Like you're missing opportunities, guitar builder person. I do, I do, I do appreciate this the stitching. Uh, it's not great, but it. It works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, no, I it, guess the, the stitching nailed the look of the whole like Texas chainsaw sort of thing, you know? I mean, I, I guess that's the thing is like, is this supposed to be a guitar wrapped in skin? Because I, I so then you could have, like you said, like the like holes and stuff in certain places, but like, yeah. why not? I mean, I guess like, why not just have that upper arm be like a hollowed out dong? <laughs> hollowed out? <laughs> Do you want to have well, like, like this, so like you want to have this is like our grossest episode ever right off the bat. <laughs> you, you so you want I'm say, I'm a say, dong hollowed out and then slipped over the top horn. I'm saying like one of the like the top or the bottom horn is just like instead of being a point at the end, it's it's um it's the tip of a penis. Ah, I see the penis tip. <laughs> I think the the penis tip belongs on the headstock, Steve. On the on the headstock. If you put I though if you put it on the horn on one of the horns, this would be a very horny guitar. Oh my wah, gosh. Wah. Nope. Yeah, there nope. there could definitely be more like nope. fingers and toes. There it is. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know what they say? Uh, oh, turn off the crickets. Uh, they say that tone is in the fingers, but what about the rest of the body? You know, this guitar covers that. <laughs> well. This this guitar has no tone because there are no fingers. I know. What, yeah, I think you need to put the the ends of the, the fingers like on the tuners. They didn't carry through the, to the tuners. I mean, they've got these skull tuners, but come on, put some fingertips on the tuners. Um, maybe like like put some teeth like in that in that widow Ooh. cut away on the headstock. Like like super glue some dentures right there and like have some some uh, you know gore hanging off of it just my uh, main put, issue um i i think i'm on board with the whole concept my issue is i don't i don't think they went far enough <laughs> also it needs a bigsby so for my own purpose needs a, of course of course it needs a bigsby for you for your horror surf band uh-huh <laughs> there you go there you go jeez i don't know i'm i you know I think this person's charging way too much. I think this is a good first try. Maybe it's not their first try. It's a good is a good try. I think there's a lot of room for improvement. I want nipples. I want pubes. I want belly buttons. <laughs> I want teeth. I want there should be like a rotten eyeball somewhere. Like a knob should be like a rotten eyeball hanging off. Yeah, both both of the knobs could be eyeballs. Yeah. Oh, I think one of the knobs could be an eyeball. Them, the other knob could just be a ball. <laughs> I think if you do both of them, it's a little too on the nose. Maybe like the knobs could be like that ball end that's not like on the femur, you know, like and start like include some bone in this. Like what what the concept is, it's wrapped in human flesh. But what about like right. what's what's inside of it? Maybe there could be places where like the stitching is busting open a little bit and like guts are pouring out. Maybe that's where you plug in and you plug in like Jeez. a big pink coily cable. So it looks like guts just like coming out of the guitar. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, you know, I was thinking the switch could also be phallic. You just want to put dicks on things, Steve. That's just where I'm at this week, man. <laughs> you know, I don't think you need the to make the entire... switch a uh, of, of phallus, but if I think I think if you put just a little bit of short and curlies right above the switch, it would get the point across. Ah, oh, yeah, it would do it itself. Yeah, yeah. Be self refer. It would be an easy reference. Yeah, yeah. The People whole would neck understand should just be an there. arm. There needs to be an elbow, like at the at the set at the ninth fret. There you needs mean, to be an elbow. You want to see that weenus skin? I'm just saying, like it should be like the whole thing. the The neck could go all the way, and let the arm elbow could be a part of the neck. Okay. You could put an elbow where the over the neck plate. Just you cannot remove the neck on this. That's the elbow, and it just like 
looks you blend in the latex to the bottom of the neck joint uh-huh. so it implies that the rest of it is an arm oh, you without know what actually what have taken this over the edge with like 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 a story concept if like a long like bleeding over the edge of one of those seams if you have like half a tattoo like ah. like half like a biker tattoo or something like that it's like then you're giving it right. a, then you're giving it a story Here's my question, Steve. On the on the back of it, it just says no regrets. <laughs> here's my story. I mean, here's my question. Will at church? Do you play this at church? You there? I am here, <laughs> but you weren't. Oh, okay. I'm here now. All right. What were you saying? What will, what's you, what do you want to add? Will at church? Will it church? Um, oh man, there are some really bad jokes. <laughs> I'm gonna say that this will not church because I don't really want to make the jokes. Okay, don't make the jokes then. Do you think that mask is an official, like, a uh, uh, Halloween mask from the movie Halloween, or do you think that's just some face mask they found? It kind of looks like it, but I will. I still like to believe that this is all just like uh, made with all. Like it's also part of the latex. Hmm. You know. Do you know the story it behind is, it that? It is pretty intense. It is. Do you know? Do you know? Yeah. All the latex work is is pretty spot on. Like the texture of the skin and the stitching and everything like that. It looks really gross in a really great way. Like they nailed it. Um, do you know yeah. the story of the uh, of the Halloween mask from the movie? I, I don't, but I have a feeling you're about to tell me. Yeah, uh, that's Michael Myers, right? Is the name of of that ghoul, that yeah. slasher? Uh, so the mask that he's wearing is a Captain Kirk mask that's turned inside out. Oh, you know what? I think I have heard that. Yeah, that's a fun little. And it makes detail. sense. It, it looks just like uh, it looks just like Captain Kirk. Yeah, if you turned him inside out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but there's just something so unsettling and creepy about that. All right, man, you got anything new? Now that we're deep into the episode with this creepy, gross, out of season Halloween guitar. Yeah, um, I'm going to sneak peek something uh, that we did just for people to speculate or be like, why would we bother speculating about this dumb thing? But I wrote like a brief description of our show for a, a major website this week a major website sounds it's, very impressive it's a, it's a major it's a major award for gile must be italian yeah don't this is like the second time this week ever... i've recited a christmas story we're all over the holidays oh so far this week halloween then christmas easter's coming up is there any easter content we want to drop in here no no that was the joke i stayed away from Oh, the Easter joke? Oh, I see. You were going to do a crucifixion joke. A good Friday joke for that for that zombie flesh guitar. Uh, more like a bad Friday joke. Oh, 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 wow. We're full of... Would have been a bad Friday this, to make, if you make that joke. <laughs> sucks. This whole part of the show sucks right now. <laughs> I know. Why did you? Why? Why right. are you doing this? So Steve wrote um, a little no. thing about us for a major website. Uh, we're gonna have a little like, like page on there, I guess. Should we yeah, say what it is? I, I, I don't think we should because it's. I don't know if it's like a hundred percent. Yeah, we'll see if it turns up. It's so first for a major retailer. No big deal. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So my yeah, new it'll thing. It'll be cool though when it's up. My new thing is that I ordered a uh, upgrade tremolo for my Squire today for the Squire Jazzmaster. Uh, I I've decided that since it already has a mastery in it and Lambertone uh, sent me pickups, that the thing that, that it's just going to turn into an upgrade bucket, and I'm just going to keep throwing ridiculous upgrades at this Squire. I should hold it while I'm talking about it. Oh my gosh! It. Um, yeah. So I was thinking about the trim, replacing that, because I love the feel of the AVRI trim on my Jaguar now. I'm like, uh, now the Squire doesn't feel so hot anymore. Uh, so I've been look, I've been like window shopping these trims that pop up on Instagram forever. They're made by Swope Guitars. 
Uh, they have like a mm-hmm. separate company for them called Descent Audio, I think, or Descent Trems. And it's this. De- it's descent. It's Descendant. Descendant. Jeez, I'm messing it all up here. Descendant. Um, and it's this hyper designed offset trim that allows you to like adjust the height of the uh, the tailpiece to bring you know the the brake angle ac- across a bridge lower and stuff like that. And there's ways to yeah, you it know, looks wild. Adjust the tension on the arm and stuff. And it's got that uh, you know kind of like stainless steel look to it. it. Looks all beefy and awesome. So it's like 170 bucks. <laughs> But I was just like, let's get stupid. Let's go for it. Let's make this thing as upgraded as possible. I'm going to turn it into a guitar that we would critique on this very show and be like, why would you do that? Just go buy you know, a higher end guitar if you're going to spend that much money. So maybe it'll I mean, be it's, it's kind fun. of like an object lesson. It's fine to do it. Just don't try to sell it. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, all that stuff, if I ever want to sell this guitar, I can take it all off and swap the old stuff back on pretty easy. It's just, you know, a handful of screws to make it go back and forth. Uh, easy mods to make. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, I actually wrote that company and I was like, hey, you want to, uh, you want to like, like, send me this thing in exchange for YouTube marketing? And the guy was like, ah, you know what? No, the other people have has asked that. And there's a policy. I'm just saying no to all that. And I'm just trying to sell them. And I was like, fair enough, fair enough. And then I thought about it for a couple of minutes. And I was like, okay, <laughs> how do you want me to pay? And he was like, oh, really? And he, was, <laughs> he was all excited that I was actually going to buy it. So I'm sure a, yeah, lot, that's of, cool. a lot of other uh, YouTubers, you know, folks like me have written them because they thought it looked cool because it does. And then when they found out that they couldn't get it, they're like, oh, never mind. <laughs> Where I'm actually, I guess, invested in it. I hope other people are buying it because uh, it looks freaking cool. Yeah. But I think uh, it's one of those things where a lot of people are going to be interested to see what I have to say about it. They want to review this thing. They want to know if it's the bee's knees or not because it looks like a really impressive trend. Uh, I guess we'll find out if it delivers since I'm paying for this thing. I'm going to I'm gonna give it my full review as a consumer, you know? <laughs> It's not a demo. I'm doing a consumer review here, but I'm excited. I'm excited for yeah, that to show what up. What other, uh, what other things do you have planned to drop on that? Um, I think I might like mess around with different pick guards and stuff, but the tuners are on it are fine. I like the split top tuners on it. Um, maybe, uh, maybe I'll go for some fancy nut at some point or something, but the nut as it is, is fine. It's really tuning stable. So I kind of don't want to mess with that stuff too much. And it already has the mastery bridge on it. I if I wanted to go crazy, uh I was <laughs> if I wanted to go really crazy, I could throw one of those Spitfire guards on it. Those things are like 250 bucks or something. <laughs> uh man, 250 bucks for a pit guard is pretty ridiculous. Um, yeah, you got to do it, man. You got to, you got to, I'm telling you, you got to drop like a thousand dollars in upgrades on this. Like, gosh. what did you even, what, what'd you pay for this guitar? Do you remember? 300, 300. Yeah. yeah. $300 guitar, uh, thousand dollars. I think actually we walked through the other day, like what you're, what we were looking at uh-huh. and just different things. And it was like legitimately like $750, $800. Oh, sure. Like. For the vibrato, the pickups, the la, pick guard, yeah, bridge. It's a lot. You, you got to find some like you got to find some hyper expensive tuners. But here's the thing: like all those upgrades are upgrades people make to their you know their American offsets <laughs> too. So it's like yeah. yeah, the the only part I haven't upgraded is the neck and the body at a certain point. Which doesn't put me that far behind everyone else that gets, you know, you know, a sixteen hundred dollar guitar and then drops a grand worth of upgrades into it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm excited. Right, man, it's, to... it's a fun thing to do. Yeah. You ready to hit this first ad? Uh we already hit the first or ad. This... <laughs> Not this first ad, this first sponsor spot. We yeah, gotta pay let's some bills. do it. Are you gonna try to attempt this right. uh, this call in? Uh, little did you know, I think I already did. What? 
Damn, dude, you're uh, on. Austin, you st- you still there? Hey, how are you guys? Wow, it worked. We're good. Very cool. Uh, so so this uh, this episode's brought to uh, you listeners, you YouTube watchers, by Runway Audio, and uh, that you know they've been sponsoring us for about uh, a few episodes now, and so we decided we'd give uh, Austin a call. And Austin, you know, uh, we've we've talked about the cables, we've talked about the board building, which uh, you know might be not the hottest thing right now. Uh, but uh, what anything else uh, you want to talk about that you you your company can do for our listeners? Yeah, I mean, basically everyone's spending all their time right now at home. Um, and so it's a really fun time to kind of be tweaking your pedal board. And I'm sure a lot of people are kind of checking out some new pedals, and as you guys are, I'm sure. Um, but it's kind of a fun way to start up a new pedal board. Um, so we do like custom patch cable stuff. Um, so if you kind of go and see what links you need and stuff like that, you can go on our site and order them uh, by the plug and by the link. Um, and then it's also like the same capacitance cabling that we have for instrument cables. So um, the same fidelity in tone. Um, yeah. Very cool. Um, on top of all that, you guys have been super generous in the show notes. We're going to have a link to a contest um, where uh, you guys are letting us give away a $75 gift card. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, exciting. So you can pick up a cable and a T-shirt or a couple cables or a couple T-shirts, whatever. Oh, so this, yeah. this is a gift card for, for your stuff. It's not for Olive Garden or something like that. No, yeah, it's in the gift card for our site. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so this <laughs> This episode is going to go live on the 13th. So how about we just run this contest uh, or contest this giveaway for the rest of the month? How's that sound? Sure. Perfect. That's great. And uh, we'll just draw this on uh, May 1st, I guess. So listeners, you got a couple weeks. That should give everyone enough time to listen and click on a link. Yeah, you just, you you just have to click Hopefully. on the link to enter, yeah. right? Yeah, that should be it. Click on the link. And there's a couple different ways you can enter. Super simple. It's Nothing easy, crazy. guys. You click on links all day. Just click an extra link. Then you'll enter to win some stuff. <laughs> Just do it. Very cool. Well, uh, thanks for jumping in, Austin. And thanks again for sponsoring the show. Yeah, well, uh, it's been a blast. Yet. Yeah, it's been a blast checking out the product. And uh, we're super glad we got to, to work with you on this. And maybe we'll do some more in the future. For sure. You guys too. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. We did it. We did a phone call. <laughs> cool. We did it. Yeah. That's a, that's a first. <laughs> we're like the first man on the moon. Only we're the first uh, podcasters to make a phone call. I don't think that's true. Uh, yeah, I'd, we're probably not even the first podcasters to record a ad spot with the sponsor. No, there's no possible way we did any firsts. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, go yeah. check out Runway uh, Audio. Click that link. Uh, enter the contest. $75 worth of cables is going to get you some cool cables if you win that. If you don't win it, yeah, um, you still you just, you barely spent any energy. So don't worry about it. You got that topic queued up, man? Oh yeah, let me uh, let me pull up the topic. Uh, you still there? I am still here. Oh my my! If uh, I find cable... this topic before you, man, I, I'm gonna be so pissed. Okay, uh, Simon Jeffries asks. Oh, how about best movie soundtracks? Does the music make the movie, or does the movie make the music? Maybe a bit too big for a podcast. I don't think that's too big for a podcast as far as topics go. I mean, the problem is, is that was like, that's a topic that maybe like an entire episode of a podcast would be. Oh, sure. Like, uh, like some other w- watch. Th- some other podcasts could tear that apart for, you know, a whole season or whatever and be like, Oh, we're covering soundtracks. We're going to, go through the top 100 yeah. soundtracks of all time. No, we, you and I are just going to pull stuff out of our butt and talk about soundtracks that we like for 20 minutes or whatever. <laughs> so what's your favorite, uh, well, so what's your favorite movie soundtrack, Steve? Uh, well, I mean, the issue is that there's a couple different angles, right? Like there's 
original soundtracks, there's not original soundtracks, you know, different things like that. Um, are you talking about like, like soundtracks that have original compositions or are you talking about like versus like soundtracks that have you know, a bunch of, you know, popular songs on it? They're just like a comp. Yeah. Some of them are just like compilations and they've got like a bunch of whatever. I'm looking at a list of best soundtracks and, um, I'm starting to feel like we talked about this recently, but maybe I talked about it on a, on a different show. We might have. Um, well, the one that came to mind pretty quickly for me was um, the soundtrack to The Virgin Suicides. Hmm. I don't know if I know that one. I don't know if I watched that one. Um, it is a Sofia Coppola joint. Uh-huh. Um, I believe the entire soundtrack was done by the band Air. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, another one that's got to be up there and is a little more controversial, at least is up there for me, is the soundtrack to... Um, Spider-Man 3. I knew it. Yeah, Spider-Man 3, dude. Um, it's just because it's got uh, that BG this, I guess so, so I guess the score for... So the, the Virgin Suicides had both a soundtrack album and a original or original score. So the the air uh the songs by air were on the original score mm. uh not the sound not the sound the soundtrack is a bunch of like Hart and todd rundgren and stuff um but the other one i was thinking of that's a little more controversial maybe is um for like hardcore fans is the friday night light soundtrack which was pretty much all done by the band um Oh, jeez. <laughs> I just completely blanked. That's fine. On the name of this band. Um, you got your Google machine right in front of you. You can cheat right now, Steve. I know. I'm, I'm looking this up. I'm looking this up right now, but it wants it wants to t tell me about the TV show. I don't care about this TV show. Yeah, who cares about TV shows? The soundtrack was done by Explosions in the Sky. All right. Um, but the thing that I've heard people complain about is that apparently there's like a bunch of added guitar parts on it that were all like added guitar parts by um i don't remember who it was i i had read somewhere that they're all added guitar parts by danny elfman and that danny elfman just like ruined them oh okay but now that i'm like look now that i'm looking it up i'm not seeing any references to that uh so i don't know i don't maybe that's not true yeah yeah wasn't there a movie where the soundtrack was like kind of tag teamed between Danny Elfman and Beck, and then they like fought over the rights, and that kept the soundtrack from being released? Was that was that Nacho Libre? Oh, is it? I think that was I, Nacho Libre had an amazing soundtrack, and I think that was part of the story behind it. Maybe it wasn't Beck and Danny Elfman, but that sounds right to me. I think it was those two. And I think there was like a big ego struggle struggle behind the scenes that prevented like the full soundtrack from being released or something like that. But yeah, that movie is one of those movies that is like the sound, like you can't have it without the soundtrack. Like I can't say that there's any movies where like the soundtrack makes or breaks the movie, but like because they're so intertwined that they are one thing, you know, you change the soundtrack to that movie and it's not the same movie anymore. Right. There is one, it looks like there's one, um, there's a bunch of Beck, there is a, a bunch of Jack Black songs. Um, actually just, oh no, the Jack Black stuff is just dialogue that's put in there. It's mostly, right. it's mostly Beck. Um, I did see one song that is Danny Elfman. Yeah. I think there was something that happened behind the scenes with that. Um, you know what movie I really love? Uh, I mean, when I watch it, yeah, I, I enjoy the movie, but like the soundtrack makes it even like so much more fun for me. Is uh, Repo Man? Have you ever seen Repo Man? With I've um, seen it, but not in like twenty years. It's got a uh, Emilio Estevez in it. That's right, right. Mighty Ducks man himself. Um, <laughs> killer soundtrack on that. So fun. Uh, just a lot of like 
early like punk stuff. He's got, you know, Iggy Pop on there. You've got uh, the Pablo Picasso song on there. I think there's Black Flag and the Circle Jerks on that on that soundtrack. Um, man, I love that soundtrack. I think I've I think I've got the soundtrack on my computer, and sometimes I just listen to it. It's been a while since I sat and listened through like my own music that's in my own collection. But man, that movie and the soundtrack is just so much fun. It's such a weird movie, and one of those movies that just just gets referenced so much by like other filmmakers. And yeah. when you when you watch it, you're like, oh, that's where they got that. Oh, that's where that came from. You know? Do you ever feel like um, a soundtrack can make or break a movie? Yeah, I said that earlier. Oh, <laughs> but do you must mean have, like? Well, can you it. think of can you think of any movies that like the soundtrack ruined the movie for you, and you're just like, I can't deal with this, or I, I'm not enjoying this, and otherwise it would have been fine. Yeah, I watched one the other day. Well, I, I mean, this I almost feel like this is a groofy. Um, I, like a goofy take, but um, just because it's recent, the Frozen Two soundtrack is awful. But you love the like first, the, new, the first Frozen soundtrack. The, the the first one I think is is at least listenable. The second one feels like they were trying to write a musical. Like the the musical themes oh, okay. are just so like they so feel it's got so like that forced. Sing, like that sing talking. Yeah, well, it's not just sing talking. It's it's orchestration. It's oh, everything. Okay. It's like, it's like if you ever listen to like, a, you know, a modern pop dance track and you just feel like, man, this per artist is trying way too hard to make a club banger. Oh, okay. Like that's how that Frozen 2 just sounds like it shouldn't have been a movie. It feels like it should have gone um, straight to theater and they just skipped the animated part. Huh. Interesting. I haven't seen it. I mean... My uh, my wife and kids have seen it, but I, I'm not gonna oh, okay. exactly go seek, seeking that out for myself. We canceled uh, we canceled Disney uh, Plus. Oh yeah, I was just the kids weren't watching it very much. I'm like, well, I can stop this and start this whenever I want, so I'm gonna stop it. <laughs> and if it's ever interesting again, we'll right. pick it up for a month or two. You know, there's no reason we have to keep this stuff. Um, I can't I'm think- going through. I can't I'm going think... through this worst soundtracks list, and there's like two or three soundtracks on here that are like just, um, like the Justin Bieber, uh, bi- biopic. It's like, oh, yeah, the soundtrack in this movie is bad because it's Justin Bieber's right, music. Right, right. You know what's you know what's ruined soundtracks for me and like background music in movies and shows. Is I leave the the captions on everything now because I've got loud kids and you can't hear what's yeah. going on most of the time when you're watching TV. Uh, so I just leave the captions on, and every now and then the captions will catch the lyrics of whatever music is playing. And so many songs, when you can read the lyrics as you're listening to it, you're like, "This song sucks. This is the dumbest song I've ever read in my entire life." <laughs> and that's kind of <laughs> ruined a lot of like like dramatic moments in entertainment for me or it's just been like, that's right. what they're, that's what they're saying in that song. That's what they're singing. Oh, that's stupid. <laughs> that's what this artist wants you to know about this, uh, about this. I mean, song, like about this movie, about this song. Some, sometimes it's like, okay, that they, they, someone, they hired someone to, to make like custom music for, uh, you know, this scene and, they just kind of told the uh, the musician like what was going to be going on in the scene, and it's almost like the musician is like trying to directly describe what should be happening in the scene with the right. lyrics. <laughs> Sometimes it's so on the nose; it's it's like very awkward and weird. And but like it's a kind of like background music where if you weren't paying attention, it just sounds like background noise, you know. I mean, they might as well be singing watermelon, 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 because you're not actually yeah, supposed yeah. to hear what's going on in the song. It's more like, oh, you know, detective goes into a hard rock club and it's like looking for, you know, his next interview or whatever. And there's a you know yeah. a fake band playing and you hear the lyrics and you're like, oh, I don't really hear what's going on. But when you can read them, geez. <laughs> so that's the only one time I can think of when like a soundtrack 
is dumb to me <laughs> or like ruins something for right. me. Right. Well, and it's like we kind of talked about it like um, a little bit a while back, but like the soundtrack for The Mandalorian was like just got tiresome to me. It started out like, really weird. Like it, it felt like they had, you know, like a, like a good soundtrack, a good score. It's like like 12 to 15 minutes long and it has all these little different parts in it that you can cut in and out of for, you know, different parts of, you know, dramatic effect in your movie or whatnot. Um, it felt like they were just copy pasting stuff without really thinking where it was going to go. And it just like, for me, as someone who does, you know, video editing and whatnot, I was like, why the heck did they drop that piece of music right there? It doesn't fit with what's going on. It doesn't flow. And when I was criticizing it, people in my thought, I just didn't like the sound of the music. I'm like, no, the music, it's, the piece is fine. They're lining it up weird with what's going on on screen. Yeah. Like it yeah. was really, really bonkers a couple times. And like my, I was, my wife was sitting next to me and like the thing would happen, the, the misplaced music, and we would both turn and look at each other and be like, what is going on right now? Why did they do that? Here you go, man. You did it. Repo Man is Pitchfork's number eleven greatest soundtrack of all time. Whoa, I've got a, uh, I've got <laughs> good taste according to uh, Pitchfork. What's their number one? Yeah, uh, their number one was uh, Superfly. Ah, man, you can't argue with Superfly. Which is I mean, like a, as yeah, far as like, like Cur Curtis Mayfield, as far as like iconic soundtracks go. Yeah, Purple Rain is basically an album, though. <laughs> Yeah, but it's also a movie, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not fair. You know what soundtrack I really enjoy? There's two. Two movie soundtracks I really enjoy, and it's silly. First one, uh -huh. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I don't even know what's on oh, yeah. Excellent Adventure, but Bogus Journey has some banger songs on it. Another soundtrack that's like most people would file it away as a guilty pleasure, but to me, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of this pleasure. Uh, the soundtrack to Dude, Where's My Car? is super fun it's a i don't even remember that one and it's like a um, it's like a time capsule Robin of the Hood early here. 2000s like if you want to hear every band that was trying to be but was not smash mouth dude where's my car soundtrack it's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun <laughs> all right i'm looking it up this soundtrack includes the likes of super drag harvey danger ween sprung monkey yeah Grand Theft Auto twice, whoever the hell they are, not the, not the uh, other people, uh, not included on the soundtrack, but also in the movie were Blur, Sm Smash Mouth was there, um, SR seventy one, and Good Charlotte. Wasn't there a, a Zebrahead song in there? Maybe there is a Zebrahead song. Okay. <laughs> It's such an odd soundtrack for me to love, but there's just something about like all the song choices. I I just have a thing about the movie. I like that movie for some reason. It's so silly and so stupid that it just it just hits me right. I was probably <laughs> just the right age for it too. I don't know, <laughs> like that early college age or whatever. All right, yeah, you wanna right. you wanna move on to. Uh, our hottest and sexiest ad to date. This is a very hot ad. I can't imagine playing this guitar. Uh, this was sent by Tyler Estes. If my computer will load it. There we go. The Leather Paul by Weird and Wired. This is actually only $300. Uh, $290 and um, shipping. So that's pretty wild. That's not too bad. Um, I mean, it, it looks yeah. like it's wrapped around, you know, this concept is modified around a really cheap single cut guitar. Like I'm looking at the headstock shape and almost wondering if this was like a J Terser or like a Firefly or something like that. Like look at the, uh, the truss rod cover on it. Oh yeah. Um, so this started budget. as something cheap, but I mean, you're getting... You're getting real faux leather on this thing. It's not even real leather. Yeah, this is a. <laughs> but you're getting a, one a of lot a kind of rivet work. Paul, <laughs> a one of a kind Les Paul style guitar covered in faux leather, uh, complete with stud binding around a body and headstock, which also features a unique paint swirl finish. The back of the neck has been sanded to provide slick playability. 
The electronics boast a single humbucker and a single volume knob. It's a simple st shooting six string slinger, a perfect pairing to all your rock and metal riffs. See and hear it in action for yourself on our YouTube demo. This refurbished guitar has been given a new lease of life. Any questions, just get in touch. Price does not include a hard case, but we can provide one for additional cost. Also, feel free to contact us regarding shipping. So, yeah, this is showing $90 to ship. My only complaint is I think the leather could be tighter to the body in some spots. Yeah, Steve wants the leather um, tighter. Well, otherwise, it's just going to sag, especially since it's like yeah. faux. You don't want that leather flopping like, around. You want it You want it skin tight on that guitar. It, it does look exactly, like it's, it's not, exactly. it's not you know, spray mounted down or something like that. Like it should have been... Yeah. It, like a more professional job would have had it, you know, really glued down to the thing. And it looks like it's flopping around a little bit. Uh, this, you know, this guitar, this guitar is the guy who uh, dresses up as a gimp for Halloween, not yeah, the guy exactly. who is a gimp on a daily basis. This is a, yeah, this is not a professional gimp guitar. Like a, a, a professional gimp or a full-time gimp, someone who's, you know, deeply... In, in you know ingrained in that lifestyle has a much nicer leather paw than this like they're going all the yeah. way like yeah. this is a hobby level gimp guitar this is you know entry level at best poser level but still um <laughs> it's very kinky there's something very kinky about it i think they were going for like a rock and roll judas priest sort of vibe but uh uh you know Usually we're seeing themed guitars on this show that are made for man caves. This feels like it's made more for like a dungeon. I feel like this guitar sits somewhere between George Thorogood and Pat Boone. You know what? I don't uh I don't usually expect a uh, a guitar to come with a strap, but I think in this case like it's it's like appropriate. Like this guitar belongs with a whole collections of various straps. <laughs> I feel like if the weather's right, you just like like lift your shirt up a little. Oh, I see you. I see the joke you just made there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was just gonna Maybe say like. Maybe you don't need straps. Maybe the, you hang it off your nipple clamps. Oh my god. I was just thinking if it's if it's like warm enough, you could just stick this guitar to your bare skin and it'll just sit there. <laughs> You know what the uh, you know what the best pedal to use with this guitar is? I wonder if you Hit can me. crack this one. Um, it's the DoD two hundred and fifty Shades of Grey box. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Why is it? Is, that's got to be a pedal, right? Like. <laughs> It should be at this point. The 250 Shades of Grey box. Someone make that right now. <laughs> Don't like expect me to oh buy my it. Gosh. Just, just make it and try to sell it. Someone will buy it. <laughs> no, I'm not seeing it. I, I just did a quick Google and I am not seeing anybody. That's a good idea, guys. DOD 250 Shades of Grey. <laughs> Man, that's so good. Because there's a 250 Grey box that everyone wants. I get 250 yeah. shades of gray box. So you just start with a gray box and then you put a bunch of, uh, you just need to put some uh, Chase Bliss dip switches on it so you yeah, can yeah. get 250 different variations. Yeah. I mean, they they said that they sanded the neck. They definished the neck to make it nice and uh, slick and smooth, but I'd, I'd feel like the amount of KY jelly on this thing should do the trick. I don't think they needed to sand it. I wrote jokes today, oh. guys. I sat down and looked at this thing and wrote yeah. jokes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> did you? Did you? I forgot. I forgot that you said you were going to do that. I was like, "Where? What has gotten into you, man? Like, <laughs> you're really, you're really having fun with this." You know what? It didn't take me long. I sat there and I looked at this thing, and they just started coming out. It's like I got things to say about this guitar. It's fun though. This what is kind a really. Of what kind of band? What kind of band do you need to be in to play this guitar? Uh, I don't know. I, I think on stage, this makes a lot more sense. Um, especially if you're going for that, you know, like you said, George Thurgood, uh, Joan Jett sort of vibe, like it's going to work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think you want to go, you know, ca like Canadian tuxedo style in this where you're matchy matchy. Like you want to contrast this 
<laughs> against denim or skin, you know? Ah. Uh, or, you know, like a, I could, like I a could green, see this. like a green man suit. <laughs> so this, so you can green screen yourself out. But I think like any kind of like rock and roll, like uh Judas Priesty sort of throwback sort of vibe is going to be fine band wise. But if you've got this, yeah. the, the problem with those guitar is the moment it's not in a band context and you bring it home and you display it in any way, it's almost worse if you don't display it. Like if you have it hidden in a case somewhere, that's almost worse. Because <laughs> <laughs> then, like, like is... then it's like you're hiding it. <laughs> I feel like this guitar wants to be in like, um, like a deranged version of like a Buck Owens cover band. Like some kind of like could be interesting. Yeah. Like country environment. Like I don't know. I almost feel like an Elvis impersonator could play this guitar. Sure. I mean it's not really the right kind of leather work, but I see where you're getting at. Like more like the rock of Billy kind of vibe. You know, like yeah. the gr- yeah. like a greaser sort of thing. Exactly. I think if you put a little bit this of pinstri- your, for- you put a little bit of pinstriping on this and some sort of patch. Like this is ready for a patch, you know. Then, you just uh, need this for your Shawnana cover band. Then you then it becomes like a biker thing, you know. Yeah. There's, this but, is uh, well, how much did they want for this again? Like three hundred in shipping. Yeah, I mean, it ends up being like, it was like If it was a bit cheaper, you just buy this for your, uh, you know, for your. Um, do you know, Do you know what Airband is? No. Have you ever heard of Airband? This was this thing that we had in my high school. Maybe they call it other things, but it's basically like where it's like conceptual lip syncing. Okay. So it's like full. It's like a full band lip sync or like your skit to music, but it's lip synced. So it's kind of like you're doing like a music video type of a thing. Um, so I'm thinking that this is the guitar you need for uh, for your uh, leader of the pack skit. Ah, uh, yeah, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, that's fun. Like yeah, you could use this in a you know your high school production of Greece. There you go. But then the moment you bring it home, your parents are gonna look at it if you're a high schooler, and they're gonna be like, "Get that out of our house! <laughs> How dare you!" <laughs> or it's gonna disappear, and you're gonna find it hidden in your parents' closet later, and be like, "Ooh, it's gonna be all sticky." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there's there's elements of this guitar. That are way more frightening than that that human flesh guitar. <laughs> it's more threatening in a way. <laughs> I don't know. I've got nothing else to say about it. I used up all my jokes. What do you think, Steve? <laughs> Sounds like you're all joked out. You ready to pay some more bills? Uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I I think it uh it joked me too hard. I forgot the safety oh, word. Man, I, I forgot. I forgot my safety word while it was joking me. Oh my gosh! It was banana. <laughs> banana, banana. That should be the name of the band. Either safety word or banana. <laughs> All right. Uh, this episode is brought to you, good people, by Diderio. They are the makers of the XT guitar string. They make a lot of stuff. Um, somebody asked. And actually as a topic that we're not covering, like how to, uh, cl- how you clean your strings and stuff. And they sell uh-huh. like a bunch of cleaning supplies. You know what? They, they actually um, have a whole they, kit, a, whole, a cleaning kit. It's, it's back there behind me, but I'm using it on my guitars. You know, let, let me grab it. You keep talking. Uh, so they've got that. They've got strings. Obviously we've been promoting the strings for a while. We, str- we promoted the strap lock solutions before that. Uh, they've got all kinds of stuff, all kinds of just different solutions, um, for people to check out, uh, on top of like the cleaning kit, they have a whole like pack. And I think maybe that's what you're getting out is the, they the, have the like, maintenance guitar well. repair kit pack, the maintenance kit. Well, I've, I've got the uh, cleaning, which is super cool. The cleaning kit here. Now it comes with this really soft towel. It comes with a pad. You can put your guitar down on. It comes with like a neck cradle holder. And then it's got string lubricant and cleaner, which you don't need if you use the, uh, XT strings. Uh, it's got a hydrate fingerboard conditioner. That's what I use on my uh, fretboard. Next, uh, I've got Protect Guitar Wax. I haven't used that. 
It has a general cleaner, the Shine Spray Cleaner. I've used that all over my guitars and it like fully degreases them. It's pretty great. And it kind of smells like cinnamon. And then there's a restore Ooh. detailer that I haven't used, which is kind of like a buffing compound to get rid of like little scratches and stuff like that. It's just really handy to have these kits and have it all kind of like contained in one thing and you, you know, you put it on your shelf or in a drawer and when you want to clean your guitar or work on your guitar, like do some maintenance, it's all just air, there in like this folder. They're great little kits. I use them all the time around here. There you go. Sounds great. Uh, yep. Go check them out at Dider all this stuff out at Dadario.com. It's a link in the notes. That'll take you straight to the XT uh, string page, and then you can just wander around from there. Yeah, just, just wander around. Spend the day exploring the Dare. Dare. <laughs> Spend the day exploring the Dadario website. Treat yourself. Yeah. Uh, this episode is also brought to you by Chase Plus Audio. That's right. I promise I'm going to do a demo of the blooper coming up soon. I thought it was going to do this, this this week, but then I didn't get around to it. But I have been spending time with this on the couch late at night, playing it into my little like mini Boss Katana amp, making freaky loops, making weird sounds while my wife is trying to watch TV, you know, making a loop and then like full on throwing on the brakes, reversing it and doing like a backwards loop in slow-mo and then trying to play over it like throwing on uh, the other bank of mods on this and just chopping it up and chopping that loop down into tiny, tiny little bits. And you think when just when you think you've destroyed the loop to the point of no return, you can press the two buttons on the bottom, completely take off the mods and get back to your original loop and get back to like the, that normal, regular people, not at all intimidating loop that you started with. It's, this thing is bonkers. It is so bonkers, yeah, the blooper. Yeah, there's so much you can do with it, and even like the stability knob in the in the middle, like it makes your loop sound like a legit messed up vinyl record. Like there's scratches, there's static, there's noise, there's like this like random pitch modulation. It's a ton of fun to mess around with, and you can make this thing into a delay too. It becomes a tap tempo delay if you put it on the correct setting and then you can apply all those same mods to it. Like you could reverse the, uh, the delay and change the speed of it to be like slow motion reverse and put like glitchy, like chopped up things on it. Ah, oh, man, it's, it's a ton of fun. It's way more fun and way less intimidating than I thought it was going to be. I I've been afraid of this pedal for a while. I thought it was going to be just wow. this mind F, you know, but it's fun. It's fun. Love it. And it's, and it's fine. And it's, it was, I, I got it. I probably like five or 10 minutes into unboxing it. I was just like, oh yeah, I get this. Yeah, this is easy. Cool pedal. Very cool. Chase Plus Auto. Cool. Chase Plus Audio. I can't audio. wait to see that. They make pedals more creative than you are. Check out the link down below. They've been sponsoring us for a long time and we, uh, we surely do appreciate it. If you ever want to support them for any reason, one of the reasons can be that they, uh, you know, they make this quality content that you love so much possible. <laughs> I said with a straight face. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yep. Um, you ready to hit this album review? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, Blake Wyland cursed us with this one. Yeah, this was, uh, I wouldn't say cursed, but this was a very hard album to like take notes on. This is, I was not um, ready for this. I was not anticipating this. I was like, Steve, pick the album. You You threw the link at me. I was like, I don't have a frame of reference to even judge this by. Here we go. Yeah, I have a little bit of reference, but not a ton. Um, Cause I kind of like, I feel like I used to um, kind of listen to music that was in this space. Right. Um, well, it's got, it's, it's, it's got a lot of like that hardcore influence to it with the vocals but then like the the guitar work is is leaning more into like a current very heavy genty doomy kind of direction i don't know exactly what how to describe it but i mean that that like whole vocal style i mean i think is going to be very familiar to anyone our age who went to shows yeah. when, when we were in college yeah. like 
I've been to so many hardcore shows in my life. Like none of that is new to me. Like the singing style. I've just, I was realizing I've never actually sat and listened to like hardcore music that was recorded. I've been to shows and it's always fun at shows, but there's something to me that feels a little bit silly about it when it's recorded. It's like, right. There's some, there's something like this doesn't really translate from, you know, a live situation to a recorded situation. It just seems kind of comical. Well, you're, ju- you're, you're just kind of missing that like super high energy of the space of the volume. Um, but also like the thing that threw me off about this and I kind of like mentioned this, um, in a few different places is like, um, did so, we like, mention the name of the, the first... album or the, the band? I don't even remember. Oh yeah. Uh, this, this artist is not called knock knocked loose. Uh, this album is called a different shade of blue. Um, I thought the, I thought the artist was Belleville. No, Belleville is the name of the first track. Oh, weird. <laughs> Um, my note on the first track my first the my uh my note on the first track was why is blake doing this to us i wrote what is this this is heavy does blake like this i think blake likes this and then like i couldn't figure out what the guy was singing um i think it's the line i can't feel a thing Uh but i thought what he was saying was i can't feel my feet Maybe he's got diabetes. So go to a doctor. um, Yeah. There's like some different things in here, but one of the things I think that threw me off is one kind of like you said, like I, one of my notes was just overall was this album came out in 2019. I don't know if it's because I'm not a frequent listener to the genre, but in my head, like the genre hasn't changed in 20 years. Like I guess the guitar parts are like maybe more technical. They're like more, you know, like you said, like maybe they're more like prog influenced and less just like Metallica influenced. Um, but it's still just this like, like real, I don't, I, I guess it's, they call themselves hardcore, but oh, it's not they? like grind. Well, I, I guess maybe they don't call themselves that, but I, I guess that that's what they would be classified as. Sure. I, di- I didn't know if there's a, you know, a genre that is more current that they'd be part of. To, to me, that was the initial impression. Like, oh, this is like a hardcore band. But they, like the, the Metal, guitar, the uh, guitar work what, is definitely pushing into like the current, like kind of more genty aesthetic, I suppose. Like it sounds yeah. very eight string. I think one of my notes was like, oh, someone got an eight string for their birthday. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a lot of that. And I think that maybe that's like one of the big differences between like, them and other artists that I would think of as being like hardcore or metalcore or whatever. Right. Is, um, you know, is the idea of like, I guess I, I'm thinking more of like older, um, like classic metal, like metal band or like metalcore, hardcore bands where it's like, they're playing like Gibson explorers and P bases and whatever. Right, but right. then when you watch the music video for this band, it's like, when one of the music videos are like, oh, you guys all have like an Ivan S contract. Right, right. Which makes sense. I think they should. Yeah, no, I'm not saying they're not like they're good or bad. I'm just saying like, yeah, they're an Ivan S band. They're an yeah. Ivan S artist. The, there was a couple moments throughout the album where I was like taking the mental note, like, oh, they're not doing the cliches right now they're doing kind of more interesting stuff that i haven't necessarily heard like guitar wise and and playing wise riff wise in this song right Uh, and it's not what i would expect like but like i think the core of it like a lot of the stuff that was happening especially in the first couple tracks i was like oh this is all kind of like stuff that i would play immediately if i was like trying to like lampoon this style of music. Oh, I'm going to play heavy. Here's like, sure. here's the three chords I'm going to play and like the riff in between. And, uh, it just, uh, I, I made the note that, um, the music really shines best when they stay as far away from those kind of playing cliches as possible. There's a couple moments that I felt really shined, uh, in that kind of respect. And then, there were parts of it where it's like, yeah, this is what I would default to if, if you asked me to play in this style. Right. 
I have no idea. Is, is this band like a big deal? I don't know if this is like a popular band. I don't know if this is like a band everyone's talking about right now. I've, I'd never heard of them before. So I don't know if we're, if I'm saying negative things about, you know, the current darlings of this genre, or if, or if this is a band that everyone hates or something like that. I really have no frame of reference. Which is probably better. I think it, I think it is. Like the um I'm I'm reading about it. This album was on um multiple like top t- top 50 of 2019 lists. Like okay. I didn't it was, think it's like one first No, it's like I mean they're all like genre specific, so it's like sure. Alternative Press's best 50 of 2019, Loudwire's 66 best metal albums of the decade, Revolver's 25 be- they were like Revolver magazines fourth best album of 2019 yeah that's interesting i mean yeah there was no part of it where i was like oh this is like cringy or like oh, i don't i don't like what's happening it's just like oh you know this, yeah here's kind of my notes on it i guess I yeah was, i think the only part that fun. like threw me off was um was one thing they do the spoken word thing that i've been hearing that like i've heard in other you know that's just part of the genre i think right right uh the second track i'm not really going track by track i'm just kind of going back but like the second track the drums at the beginning and the way everything is going like almost has a psychobilly vibe which i thought was really mm. cool yeah that's interesting. but then it completely break it just has a super hard breakdown and a spoken word part and the note that i had is that breakdown was extra broken down <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think, you know, this is like this album thematically from what I could dig out of it, which honestly, like it wasn't a ton. Um, but it's kind of more like, I mean, I, someone was angry about something. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like this, uh, I don't know. I, I had multiple songs where I just didn't even take a note. I tended to like zone out a bit more. Sure. And just listen and not really, um, really, uh, yeah, like focus on what what was going on. Felt like I, it was a little harder to review. I had the thought towards the end of it because it's just this. It's like you know, twelve tracks of four minute songs or whatever, however long that is, and the whole time it's just kind of this very sort of like aggressive, angry try to scare your parents with the audio qualities of this kind of <laughs> kind of sound. And I was thinking about it and thinking about, you know, like hardcore music when, when we were kids and whatnot and the kind of music that was kind of scary and thinking about now being an adult and like the kind of stuff that, you know, I sit in bed awake at night and think about as being scary. And like, right. None of this is, you know, even comes close to the things that adults are afraid of. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like whatever problem, you know, these, these young people have when they're writing these scary sounding songs are not as scary as, you know, a lot of the things that adults think about that keep them awake at night. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear the metal song. That's like taxes. Yeah, I did my withholdings wrong. Now I owe the government taxes. <laughs> no refund for me this year. <laughs> I filed wrong three years ago. What's going to happen? Am I going to jail? <laughs> I forgot about the bonus in 2010. Now I owe the government 200,000. I don't know. Just some thoughts, guys. Yeah. Like, or like, maybe some like, uh, is there, is it maybe like, some hardcore songs for the 40 year old crowd? Yeah. Is there going to, you know, when this band gets older, are they going to write a song about not knowing what to do with their aging parents? You know, oh. <laughs> where's uh, the song about 401ks? Yeah. Or like, you know, just that, you know, writing a song about that fear of your kids just dying for some reason. <laughs> Like just completely irrational, like parent fears or whatever. Like, yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah, to get... There could, there could be all kinds of things. How yeah, about a yeah. song about like, uh, your, uh, your catalytic thing, converter though. getting, getting stolen for the platinum. Here, here's the thing though. Like when people are experiencing that adult fear 
that like grown up, like terrify the crap out of you fear, they just end up writing and recording like the worst white jazz ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's be honest. Let's be honest. This album could have been about taxes. I wouldn't have known. <laughs> I got the, I didn't actually listen to the lyrics, but I got the impression it was just, you know, kind of young adult angst and anger and kind of just being, you know, uncertain and outsiders or something like that. I mean, like I said, I didn't actually right. listen to the lyrics, <laughs> but that was the vibe I was getting. I mean, it connected to the teenage part of my brain. It's like, yeah, this is a, this sounds the way I felt when I was young. Like I get it. I get where this is coming from. Like that, that feeling was locked up inside of me hard when, uh, when I was around that age, I don't know, Blake, I mean, I don't tell us, tell us in the comments or on the group, what you think about this album and defend it or tear it down, whatever you think about it. I don't know. They've been a band since 2013. Like, I don't think they're young. Well, they're younger younger than than me. I mean, I watched the music video. They look like college kids. Maybe they filmed that music video super long ago, but. Wherever they were coming from when they wrote this music, that's what I'm judging them from. It feels, <laughs> it feels like something a uh, you know like a 22 year old is responsible for. Right, right. I think to be in like a band in certain genres, like you just have to be forever locked in an age. Right, I mean, right. How many how many songs is Blink 182 going to put out about you know how they couldn't get weed in high school or whatever? Yeah. How many times are Green Day going to reboot as teenagers. Like you guys are like 56 years old now. Like stop acting like you're teenagers. Like time to put away the the eye ma- makeup boys. It's over. You're grown oh up. Now. <laughs> uh we want to get to the last ad and get the heck out of here. Go to bed. I want to do some housekeeping, man. I want to shout out to the people who support us. Yeah, totally. Um so we got a few this week. As starting at the one dollar level, we've got um, Miles. Oh man, I can't read my own handwriting. I believe in What's you, Steve. That about oh, I'm so mad about this. <laughs> uh, Miles Page. That does not look like a P. Uh, so we've got Miles Page. And uh, Stephen Hess at the one dollar level. So thanks, guys, for joining. One dollar level is our, our uh, the level that we like to talk about the most uh, because it's anyone kind. Of, maybe a lot of people can do it. I don't know. Um, at Any the, almost anyone can afford a dollar a month. You only do it once and then cancel it. But you know, all you yeah. dollar a month people, you think about that. That's twelve bucks a year. 24 bucks in two years, that's enough for me to get one more pedal for the affordable board. You are funding me, you know, reviewing a super affordable pedal that someone out there will be able to buy with their lunch money. You're doing a service to the world. There you go. Um, at the $5 level, we got Michael Park. Uh, thanks, Michael. That's a best friends level. So nice. I'll get a merch pack together for you at some point. I'm like way behind on shipping. I you with work has just been crazy, oh. and then yeah, uh, then life got extra crazy. So I'm just really behind on on that. But I'll get those merch packs out someday. And at the ten dollar level, we've got two new contributors. We've got uh, Liam Deacon. Liam, um, what do you got? For, what do you got for Liam? Um, let's do. This most guy D250 overdrive. This is a DoD 250 with a single knob. And I'm going to throw in one of these little battery clip guys that have been coming called the cheap pedals and a option knob. You could put that option Very knob cool. on the on the most guy D250. And then who's the next one? Uh is a David Cornell. And David Cornell was a best friends level guy who was a best friends level guy for like a couple weeks, and then he jumped up to the ten dollar level. So thanks, oh, David. Damn. Upgrade, huh? I'm gonna send him the Azor, uh, little brown reverb pedal that they sent me, and I already had one of these, so it's redundant. So might as well give it away to a uh, a Patreon, right? And then I'm also gonna throw yeah. in uh, another one of those little battery cl- clips, 
And uh, there, you're good to go. So enjoy that stuff. Very cool. So we'll get those out. Yeah, when this Very uh, exciting. Quarant- if you want to support the show, what's when, that? When this quarantine is over, Steve will pick up those bags and ship them out. <laughs> <laughs> it might take I mean, a while, maybe you guys. Just, maybe you just need to go. Maybe you just need to go, like leave it on your front porch, and I'll just come by and grab them some. Oh, like, yeah, after maybe. work one day. Yeah, we could do something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, spray spray it down with bleach as you pick it up. Oh my gosh! With rubber gloves. Um, <laughs> I've got bottles of alcohol. I could just bring, not like. Oh, I've alcohol. got bottles of alcohol too, Steve. I mean, it's. A, it's it's, yeah, an, yeah. it's an essential service. <laughs> it's liquor stores right now. There you go. <laughs> um, all right. This last ad was sent by... Oh, no. If you want to support us, head over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle humcast. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you can uh, see all what we're all about over there. And, yeah, yeah. And sign up however you want to sign up. Oh, hey, by the uh, way, this last... all the, we, I bought a new piece of gear for the show. Right now we're filming this. With a brand new 4- oh, yeah. 4K Lumix G85. Uh, so, I, bet yeah. I, look, I bet I look real good on that camera. You look super good right now, Steve. Uh, I've been needing another Panasonic camera because they run longer than half an hour at a time. Uh, so I'm going to put my old one on my overhead cam for doing demos. And now this one will be our 4K cam for the podcast and for the rest of the demos. And that was all paid for by the Patreons. So keep that in mind. Uh, this... Next ad isn't really an ad. It is. Yeah, this is from uh, Chris a, Pop Christian Beer Man. It's a is a build um, that a, you know someone in our audience, someone on our Facebook group, posted like, "Hey, look what I built! And I think it's stunning." Yeah, this is the second one. Did you see the first one? I did not. The first one is built into one of those like black b- bake light camera cases. Oh wow. Yeah, it looks really cool. Obviously, like you can't. Some people are like, "Oh, that's like that plastic that if you like drop it, it shatters into a thousand pieces." And he's like, "Don't you guys use loopers or like true bypass loops <laughs> kind of a thing?" But it's like, you know, it's like either way, man. These things look super cool. Yeah, this I mean, is I, kind of like the. Uh, this one's like, like aluminum the, uh, with like a like a greenish gray like fabric yeah. wrap. I mean, look at the pictures, guys. If you're listening right now, go look at the pictures. Click the link and look at the pictures. It's just stunning. It's got a lens sticking out the side. I kind of wish he had been able to pull that lens off and turn it into a knob somehow. Oh, that would've been cool. Yeah. But it's just, it's a two knob fuzz with a foot switch. This is a good like recasing opportunity cuz it just looks like a cool box. Like I wish I had a box that looked this cool on a pedal board. I don't even care what it does. <laughs> That's the <laughs> thing though there, about it's empty. about old cameras though is like you can pick them up for dirt cheap because they really don't work anymore. And there's right. you know th- there are people out there who will like take something like this and they'll salvage the lens off of it and they have the technical know-how to make an adapter to get it to fit onto a modern camera and then they'll go walk around downtown and take pictures that look old timey, but otherwise like it's, it's just antiquated technology that doesn't have, you know, a way to actually use it realistically anymore. Like, yeah, you could probably still get film. You could probably still like develop the film in a black room of your own making or whatever, but you're not going to do that to use one of these, you know, kind of, kind of just relics of, you know, consumer devices because this isn't a professional camera. This is like a, a hobby tourist camera from the past. Some people really like those, man. I've got a, now I don't know that they're actually selling for it, but like I've got an old Pentax uh, camera that I've been wanting to get some film for just, just like kind of just to do it, you know? Sure. But then where are you going to develop it? You got to send it out to somewhere, I guess. Yeah. Places, there's still places that do, yeah. that develop actually like i don't know if they still do um but at least like a couple years ago walmart was still taking film oh really yeah That's crazy. Like, i think maybe i think maybe now you have to like sh- ship it to them or something but yeah at least a while like not too long ago you could still like just drop it off yeah. at like certain locations uh if you no, i don't uh, know it's my grandfather's camera 
If if you were gonna if you found a really cool old camera and you wanted to have someone recase a pedal into it, what kind of pedal would you have put into the camera? Uh, let's see. I already know my answer. Um, like maybe like a ping pong delay. Sounds fun. My answer is optical tremolo. Oh. Ah, oh, there you go. Get it? Optical? That's a good one. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I, makes, I get it, Ryan. It makes I too much it. sense. I'm all full of bad jokes this episode. <laughs> I think fuzz makes a lot of sense because you can just put, you know, a fuzz in anything. They're super small circuits for the most part, and they're pretty forgiving and expressive and weird. Um, but man, what a what a cool case! What a cool build! All right, Steve, tell us about the song and get us out of here. Yeah, this song was sent by Co Schneider. From the Flippin' Flippers. Ah, co. Cool. He says, uh, t- he says uh, like two years ago, Kevin Equitz of Equitz Guitars came by my studio to, quote, create some content with me. We recorded videos and pictures of us both playing uh, Jennings guitars, the Jennings guitars I had on, the, on hand at the time for the One Day Road shows, but I never did much with any of that, quote, content. So this <laughs> is actually, this little song is uh, Kevin Equitz from Equitz Guitar playing... A Jennings Catalina made by Chad Jennings, and then um, Co is playing bass and doing the drum programming. It doesn't have a name, uh, but he said the thing to really take away here is that Kevin is a incredible guitar player. Let's uh, which anyone who's been around him when he plays knows that. But yeah, he's kind of like, oh yeah, I d- I I dabble in the guitar. <laughs> he's very <laughs> humble. All right. Let's hear this thing then. All right. Yeah, there you go. Bye, everybody. Stay Stay grounded. Stay grounded. We did it.